All right, this is the next video for my web animation class. This is in this class we're learning HTML5 JavaScript, uh, making games. The book I use for the class, this web animation class, is Foundation Game Design, Game Design with HTML5 and JavaScript by Rex Vanderspuy. It's an excellent book. It's great for beginners. Um, uses pure JavaScript code and then adds a little bit more JavaScript each chapter and the games get slightly more complex each time as you learn one step at a time. In chapter 6 he introduces the canvas HTML5 element for drawing images to the screen and he also introduces objects, JavaScript objects. So that's what we're working on right now. I've got a trinket at trinket.io so in this trinket we just have some simple uh, declarative statement. We're going to do HTML and then a title, and then it's we don't have the head tags or the body tags. Just go right into the JavaScript, and we're going to experiment with objects. I'm going to follow the book basically directly. So, what does he do? He says, "Okay, var robot," and then to create the object, you could just say equals an open curly brace and a closed curly brace, and you have an object. Now what's nice about the object is an object can have multiple properties. So you could have, let's say, a, a hero with a bunch of properties for a game or an enemy with a bunch of properties in the game. And those properties can be strings, they could be booleans, they could be, um, I'm guessing, arrays or functions or all kinds of things that you could put into um, into this object. And the other nice thing about object is, is you can create more objects from your objects and they would inherit all of those properties. So that's nice. So there's one way to do it. So we could say var robot and then say robot dot material equals a string. Okay. And the string in the book is titanium. And then it has another property, basically, whether it's happy or not in the game, right? Whether it could be dead or alive or basically the game, but it's a Boolean, so it's set like that. And then you could also actually say robot dot, and he uses in the book, make breakfast, and that, he sets that equal to a function. And we'll just say the function, and the function is just to send something to the log to the console so we'll say ham and eggs all right so so now robot is an object it has this robot dot material equals this robot dot happy equals this and robot dot make breakfast equals a function and that's it all right and then we could then send, we'll say console.log, what is robot, and play. Material, titanium, happy is true, make breakfast, f is a function. So you, you basically, uh, you have those things. Um, if I want to call the function now, if I want to call that function, I could just say, robot.makeBreakfast and I should be able to call the function by using dot syntax and just following our robot object with the make breakfast function. So let's see if that works. Ham and eggs, there it goes. If I want to call individually one of the other properties, I could just call that out. robot.makeBreakfast happy um, but since it's just a property I'm probably gonna have to send that to the console yep let's send that to the console uh, robot dot happy and we'll clear this just to show that we clear it and play true robot dot material and play it and titanium all right, and if I want to change any of those things, I could change it on the fly by just issuing another line just like that, setting robot.material equal to another string, 
like in the book, he uses plastic. Okay, so that sets it to a different, you know, makes it equal to something else. All right, the other way that you could create this, all right, so I'm going to remove this. The other way that you could create this is to set up your object like this and say, okay, var robot, robot equals open curly brace, close curly brace, and then set the attributes one at a time here. So if you do it this way, you say material colon and then equals the string titanium. And then you put a comma between each element in the object. So happy colon equals true comma make breakfast colon is a function and I could put it all in one line here function console dot log ham and eggs all in one line. Okay, so you can see here it has string property, it has this property which is a boolean, and then this property which is a function. And I can just add more items to this as I need it. And I say play and let's see here. Uh, yep, oh, I, I put a I put a semicolon right here wrong because the thing ends um, well it's it'll probably be easier if I do it this way just to show you the function right so there's our function it might look easier or better if I do it this way so there's the function and it looks cleaner and then I'll clear this and play in other words these items are all separated by commas and this one is the last item so it doesn't need a comma but if it did I would put a comma here and I would say next thing here and say wheels true right something like that and Right, play. All right, um, we'll test it. Console.log robot. What is our robot? Material titanium happy equals true. Make breakfast is a function. Wheels is true. What does the function do? I could, or we want to call that function robot.make breakfast. And I can call it like that. And great. Okay, so the other nice thing about um, objects like this is you can create new objects from, um, from your other object. From, from an object, you can create new objects and they'll inherit all of these properties. So, let's see here. All right, so let's do that. So in the book, he says var new robot. All right, we're going to make a new robot, but we're going to make it from our already created object. And to access that object, we use a capital O and say object.create. That'll create an object. And what we can do is just say create the object from robot. So new robot is going to be an object. It's going to be created from the robot object. So now new robot inherits all of the all of the properties of um, of robot. So for instance, if I say here, okay, console dot log, okay, so console dot log, and then tell me new robot dot material. What's new robots material? And we'll hit 
play. Let me clear this and play titanium. New robot has the property material, which was equal to robots, which is titanium. Why? Because new robot was created from the robot object. But I can also set, let's say, um, a new property. So and that's what they do here. So they'll say new properties, new properties. All right. New robot dot color equals gray. Okay. So now if I set that, let's cut this. And then I say, show me new robots color. It's gray. If I say, show me robots color, it's undefined because color is not a property of robot. It's now a property of the new robot. So, um, so it can inherit all of the properties of the previous object and then it can also you can also add new properties to that object. All right, the other thing you need to know about objects that you're going to be using in the games is looping through their um, their their properties. So we got to go through that really quickly. So we're going to loop through the properties. So we're going to we're going to need to do that in the game. So we'll use a for loop. We'll say for. This is the structure of a for loop. And we're going to say for var i, our iterator, in, we'll say, new robot. So for iterate in new robot. Now, if we write it out like this, OK, if we write out like this, it's going to iterate through every, every property in robot, at least it should. Console.log. Whatever i is, it's an iterator, right? i plus, let's give it a little string here, plus, let's access robot or I'm sorry, new robot. And in between brackets, we'll say, give us whatever the, whatever iteration we're in, whatever property we're in. All right, let's see here. And we'll clear this and play it and see what happens. Color gray, material titanium, happy equals true, make breakfast as a function, there it is, and then wheels equals true. So you could see here that it went through each item in the, in the new robot object. Notice it went through them. Looks like they went through them, yeah. So, well, that looks pretty good. So it basically looped through and showed us each item in the, in the object. Okay, I was messing this and I wanted to point something out. What's interesting here too is that in the book, he's looping, he's creating a loop where you loop through um, and uh, your, your, your incrementer, your var i here in new robot, this is going to loop through each element in the new robot object or each property in the new robot object and then here you're sending it to the log and you could say here it says i plus and then a little string here just the colon and the space and then it, it says in new robot and then passes i in between brackets which reminds me of an array but that's not really what's happening here what i believe is is happening is that at this point 
var i in new robot is each element or property in new robot. So essentially what it is is it's basically doing you know new robot dot material. That's how it's accessing each piece. And then on the next one it would be new robot dot happy, right? So that's how you access each element or each property inside of the object. Um, it's not, don't confuse this with an array. In other words, you can't say, show me what's in new robot item zero or item one, like it's an array, because that's not going to work. So essentially, this is what's happening. And then when you play it out, like if I play this out, you get to see all of the properties in the object. But don't let this confuse you. That's not that's not what's happening. In other words, if I tried to say, show me or uh, log for me, and if I took this right here and uh, whoops, cut it out, maybe got rid of this and pasted it in here and said, just show me new robot and tried to say what's like item zero as if it was an array or something it's not so that's going to be undefined you know or item one right that's going to be undefined because that's not what this is it's not it's not an array so I just wanted to point uh, that out all right, that's it for a quick introduction into objects and um, and looping through um, how to loop through objects and access, create new objects from objects and set up their properties and then access their properties. And then in the next, in this game that we're gonna create in chapter six, he's gonna use objects and the canvas element in the game and then from here on out, the canvas element will be used in all of the games, as well as objects will be used in all of the games. So that's why it's important that it's introduced at the beginning of chapter six, because you're going to be seeing it.